Well, I'll read this through. But I really don't think your counsel's going to want to call more witnesses than he's already planned to. My wife's worried, you see. It's this business about pleading guilty. Well, we can hardly plead otherwise, can we, Mr. Turnbull? Well, I see that, but I'm afraid she doesn't. Mr. Turnbull, there are very cogent mitigating circumstances. And you've a first-class counsel. Well, tell your wife from me not to worry, or at least not to expect the worst, which is what she's doing, I assume. Yes, she is. I'll tell her what you said. I'm sure it'll make her feel better. Now, you know where the courthouse is in Sedgwick? Yeah. The quarter sessions are on Monday, and I want you there 9 a.m. sharp. Well, I'd better get back home now, then. Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget, 9 a.m. sharp. Of course. Thank you. Poor man. Surely it's not so terrible. What he did, I mean. People who lend money to other people have to have some kind of protection under the law. Well, maybe, but he's expecting the condemned cell at least. He wasn't able to live up to the family name without going bankrupt, that's all. Or devil. In a small community like this, just to walk across the town square knowing every day that people know is some kind of sentence. Don't you think I reassured him? No, not completely. No. Well, I couldn't completely, could I? I mean, I'm not the judge, am I? Johnty, about Sarah. She rang me last night. Oh. Oh. Well, I suppose she thinks I'm a bit stuffy asking her out here for a formal interview. When we've already talked about it last time she was here. No, well, she says she'd prefer it that way. Uh, she's a bit surprised, that's all. Surprised? What about you asking her out for an interview? Seem to get the impression that you don't approve of women in the profession. I can't imagine how. Maybe she changed my mind. She, she wouldn't want to feel it was because of me. <laughs> you put her straight on that account, I hope. Yes, of course. I told her that you were pretty hard-headed. Did you? Absolutely. Single-minded, completely work-orientated, uh, no other interests at all. I see. Yeah, I told her that you wouldn't be swayed by anything but purely commercial considerations. You know, I don't think I like this chap. Who? This character that you created that's supposed to be me. Kind lady, you don't mind if I show your cab, do you? Church Street Bowdown. Is Tony Cap sticking there? Yes. I'm Sarah Hunt. Captain! Ah, sometimes feel I ought to buy these things by the dozen. I get through so many of them. Thought you got away from it, didn't you? Your mother got you some oranges, Mr. Johnty. Mum? When she came in with her order, yes. Six oranges for my handsome son, she said. Did she? Well, that's it then, Mr. Bertels. Oh, right. I, uh, I hear Lord Colney is coming for the weekend. Oh? The account stands at 25 pounds and 10 shillings. As much as that? Well, you must collar him. I'm sure you'll pay out. If you should see his lordship... Oh, no, I think it'd be far better coming from you. And cheaper. Mind you, if you want me to take your money... Tell you what, if he doesn't pay up soon, let me know and I'll send him one of those within seven days or else letters. Bye-bye. Uh, Mr. Jonty. Mr. Jonty, forgive me for mentioning this, but, uh, You, um... You haven't paid. <laughs> Why have I come this way? It's quicker. It's much quicker. So, visiting Jim? Jim? Yes, partly. And to be interviewed by your brother, actually. 
interviewed by Jonty as a partner of Perspective. Possible. Unlikely as it may seem. Ah, I've forgotten. You're in the law business too. When did you pass your exams? Last year. Oh. I've only been out school for a couple of years. Three years to go. <laughs> Still. I can't see you as a partner to John T. Oh, why not? Terrible waste, for one thing. No, if it was me. My dear Edward, your letter was not such a shock to me as would have been the opening of my suitcase to find no painting there. I understand your reasons for removing it and saving me from whatever the consequences of my taking it might have been. I assume the reason you didn't confront me at the time was that knowing how obstinate I can be, you feared I might persist in my folly and end up jailed for robbery <laughs> or something equally ridiculous. I'm grateful to you that you took the trouble to seek some reassurance of my financial position now that Tom and I are to divorce. But I cannot feel grateful to Tom as I think he would have liked me to feel. Only angry. And I'm afraid unforgiving. Where's your father? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, by the way, I won't be getting out here. I'm going to my uncle's in Sedgwick. Um, I won't bore you with all the details. I'm sure you'll hear about it all in due course. At least let me give you my share of the fair. Wouldn't dream of it. Uh, Sedgwick, please, right now. Oh, good luck with the interview. He was in, yes. What did he have to say about Lord Colney? <laughs> he said uh, I should um, tackle him myself. Yes, he's right. Why should we put money in cap sticks' pockets? Cost a fortune, these solicitors. <sighs> nay, I don't know, Amy. I mean, if it costs us five pounds to get 25 we wouldn't otherwise see, I'd reckon that's a good investment, eh? It's cross gentry. Running up bills, getting stuff they can't afford. And what are they when they're all there? They know better than us. I'll tackle him myself. You will that. And don't take no this soft talk, neither. Man to man. Understand? I think Madge will be in the kitchen. <laughs> Tom? Edward! Tom! Good to see you. Come on inside. Madge was, uh, was hoping you'd call. Don't you pinch it. Go on. Good God. Shouldn't she be in London? It'd be a good chap to let me fly Bob for the cab, Uncle. Okay, thanks very much. Goodbye. Two brothers both get their water from the same spring. But it has to go to one house before the other. The second brother wants an independent pipeline direct from the spring to his house. But he would have to pass over the land belonging to the first brother, and the first brother won't give his permission. Do you know your father was coming up for the weekend? Yes. Why? I heard it just now in Bertles. I thought maybe no one had told you. Beastly Bertles. John T, what have you forgotten? I don't know. What have I forgotten? You've forgotten the onions. Oh, last. I knew there was something. I'll uh, pop next door and get some off Mum. How do you spell schedule? Schedule? S C H E D U L E. Damn. Good job I'm more or less acting unpaid here, isn't it? I'd have been fired Yonkska if I wasn't. No, you wouldn't. We couldn't have managed without you. All the new clients we've had in the last few months. Couldn't have taken them on. Anyway, I thought he was paying you properly. Do you want me to talk to him? Yes, please. 
I mean, it's not that Granny can't afford to have me. It's just I'd like to be independent. Yes, of course. Daddy's up to his eyes in debt. You've heard the local gossip. Well, local gossip doesn't interest me terribly. God. You're unique. So, you've still got the Jarrett, then? Have you been up to the hall yet? Uh, no, no, I haven't. Met a chap the other day who'd actually served there when they used it for prisoners in the war. Italian officers, you know. Yes, we knew some of them. Oh, did you? Yeah. I remember once going up to one of the old servants' rooms on the top floor and finding some Dante written down on one of the walls. Lasciate ogni speranza che voi entrate. Goodness. And I felt this odd sense of affinity with the bloke who'd written it. You were a prisoner yourself, of course. Yes. Vicky should still be next door. She sometimes works later on a Friday. I'll go and see. You know it's absolutely ridiculous that I have to go out into the street when I want to see my son, when he's just the other side of that door. How's Vicky getting on there with Jonty? It is Jonty, isn't it? I, I met him once, didn't I? Yes, yes. Oh, they're all young, all three of them. Just starting out. Ah, uh, to be starting out. Yes. They seem to get on marvelously well. I'm going to Australia. My brother farms out there. That's Larry. Yes. There'll be nothing for me here when the estate's been sold and the death duty's paid. Not as bad as that, Tom. I've not just come to have a last look at the hall. I've come to ask Vicky if she wants to go out there with me. I'm pretty sure she won't, but I have to ask her. He wants to? Oh, yes. At the same time, I want her to have what she wants. And if it's not Australia? And she'll stay here with Liz's mother. I don't mind that. Actually, I think the old girl prefers me to Liz. That time Liz came here, did Vicky meet her? No, I, uh, I got the impression that she went out of her way not to be here when she heard that Liz S. had gone. Yes, I thought it might be like that. I mean, I know Liz and I are broken up, but it's not natural for a girl to feel about her mother as Vicky does. And if she won't come to Australia, I don't want her to be alienated from Liz, even if we are divorcing. Why does she feel this way about Lizette? I'm damned if I know. I mean, I know Liz has her faults, as we all have, but, but she's not an ogress. Have you asked Vicky why? Indirectly. Once or twice, maybe. How did she react? As if she hadn't heard me. You uh, mean to ask her again? He's in there, darling. Daddy. Hello, darling. Two seven six. Oh, hello, Herbie. Sorry I was out on your phone earlier. Yes, yes, John. No, Tony hasn't arrived back here. I see. Yeah, well, how final is this decision? What's he supposed to have done? Dear fellow, I'm so sorry. Yeah, look, Kirk, could I phone you back over the weekend? That's extremely decent of you. I will. I will indeed. Last seen leaving his digs with a small suitcase. I pin my hopes on the size of the suitcase. Suggestion of uncertainty about it. Would you say your brother's life was abnormally ruled by sex? I wouldn't say abnormally, just uh, more than the average. Uh, sorry, I'm embarrassing you, old lad. It's just that uh, I've always left this sort of thing to your mother. I'm afraid mother left it to you. Did she? Oh, dear. Uh, I suppose that um, nature and life have a way of informing one about these things. I suppose. What's he been up to this time? A client's daughter. Wife. Oh, my God. 
Oh, my God. I wouldn't even thought that Tony would... We mustn't jump to conclusions. Admirably loyal, old boy, but hardly in line with past experience. I think I know where to find him. Yes, at your Uncle Henry's. Let's just wait for him to surface, shall we? He uh, couldn't finish his articles with you, I suppose. Well, I've got Tim's sister coming. Final, is it? Well, no. Couldn't you take him on? No, no, it wouldn't work, would it? He wouldn't want that anyway. Well, what makes you think it would work with me? I suppose. Sam, you know, would you like some tea? Uh, no, thanks. I'll work to your mother all right. Hello, darling. Mum, don't buy me things from Bertles. It's embarrassing. What things? Well, oranges, for example. But they're good for you. I know. I buy them all the time. Oh, dear. Am I turning into a mummy? Well, you're certainly building up opposition to any moves you may be planning to open up the connecting door. What moves? I don't know, do I? If I had the facilities of MI5, I might have a slight chance of finding out. What the hell's the matter with you two? That's our supper. Yes, well, John, she needs it. Thanks. I'd better get it. Mr. Tony, come on. Hello. Where is he, Mr. Capstick? Uh, he's in my office. Oh, what happened? Is he... Yes, I'm afraid he's a little bit the worse for wear. Oh, dear. He didn't do that, did he? Uh, it was a complete accident. He's not used to it, you see. Not that he didn't before, but... I tell him not to worry, but he will. I tell him you'll get him off. Well, he'll get a fine, I suppose, but... we don't expect him to get off scot-free. Mrs. Turnbull, I'll do what I can. Yes, I know you will. I've got the car outside. I'll fetch him. Your husband's very good. Everybody says how good he is. No, he's not. Not my husband, actually. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's quite all right. I'm always jumping to conclusions. Geoffrey. Oh, sorry, Capstick. I'm sorry you've been troubled, Mr. Capstick. It's quite all right. Goodness gracious me. Well, you seem to have handled that very well. Poor devil. Criminal offence, yes, but hardly the criminal type, is he? Well, I know you can't discuss it in detail, but surely there must be mitigating circumstances. There are strong mitigating circumstances. He just seems determined to look on the black side. Oh, well, maybe he thinks it's an illusion that we have the finest legal system in the world. Well, do you think it's an illusion? I think that without reform it might become an illusion. It was only five years ago that the Legal Aid and Advice Act was passed. I'd say that was a pretty considerable reform. Well, you don't think that'll make the law accessible to either the very rich or the very poor, but not the in-between? Don't you quite sure? So you don't see any need for reform? 
Nothing in particular, no. Fella, don't. Oh, really? You? Can I still use this? Yes, wash it. Quite fair, is it, that an undischarged bankrupt borrows... Well, I suppose he borrows ten, maybe twenty pounds to get himself out of some desperate mess. And, and when I think of all the people that have made a fortune out of the war and are going to live in luxury for the rest of their lives, yes, I do see a need for reform, actually. I just think I'm just British surprised you don't. has been tried and tested and proved pretty well OK over a fairly considerable period, that's all. Was that my interview? Uh, leave that lot over there, Tony. I'll deal with it in the morning. Close the door. Fancy a first edition Winston Churchill, My African Journey. Three pounds, nineteen shillings and sixpence. What, in my financial circumstances? Not good. Not good at all. Well, I can come up with a bob or two if you're really desperate. Oh, no, 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 no. Just, just a, a night's bed and breakfast would be lovely. Just tonight, is it? Looks like you've got all your worldly goods in there. Well, actually, I have. You see, inside, two smaller suitcases, both removed very skillfully by moonlight on two separate nights. Oh, you learn all the tricks down there, you know. Back for good, then? Hmm. Probably. God knows what I'm going to do, though. What about your articles? Well, I couldn't go into Dad's practice. It just wouldn't work. Well, there's Jonty. Tim says they've got more work on than they know what to do with. So. What went wrong in London, then? Guess. Won't you come in? No. Gran likes you, you know. When I stayed with her in the war, she used to remind me every night to remember you in my prayers when you were a prisoner. She likes you. I think she's pretty fed up with Mum. She loves her, I suppose, but I don't think she actually likes her. I don't think it's so much not liking as not understanding. Do you understand her? Mum. I'm not a great understander of people, I'm afraid. I've not been much help to her. Why do you always blame yourself? It's true. I'm going in. If this goes on much longer, I'd probably end up punching you on the nose. Hotel 276. Herbie, hello, how are you? No, no, Edward's gone down to the pub with Jaunty. Anthony? No, Anthony's not here. Should he be? You'd prefer me to hear what from him? Well, if you're going to be stuffy... Very well, I'll tell him that you phoned. Did I hear the telephone? No, darling. It was the wrong number. Oh. Morning. Hello, Judy. Come on. You always get up this early. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't wake you, did I? No, no. I'm an early riser, too, actually. You, uh, had your interview yet? No. And I'm not counting on anything. Not sure you want to live in this little backwater, eh? Oh, I'm sure of that. But it's not the be-all and end-all, is it? I mean, there's the work, and the people you work with. Well, anyway, there I was. With your socks half off. With my socks half. And she was under the counterplane, ready. And, and, well, she wasn't actually, because I found out later she still had her clothes on. But then this bloke suddenly comes from the bathroom. Camera in hand, blinding flash. And, and, and I'm in... Flagranti, almost delicto. And you know what the first thing I thought was? Was how am I going to explain this to my ruddy father? Ah. I mean, what, what am I going to do? You know what he's like. I, I suppose I should do. 
He's a bit of a martinet, really. <laughs> what you really mean is that he audibly objects when you play silly beggars. Oh, come on, Uncle. Even you said that I was more sinned against than sinning. That's possibly true, but it doesn't alter the fact that you were an absolute idiot, does it? I usually have a cream bun and a coffee about this time. What's your poison? Women, I suppose. But I'll settle for a donut. Catch. You know the shop I use? Bottom of the street, turn right. And, uh, change from a half crown? There better be. So, one cream bun, one donut. Capstick of Capstick Hall. Henry, it's me. Good morning. And how are you this fine morning? Is he there? Who? Anthony. Did Edward tell you? I mean, he knows. I suppose he told you. No, no, no. I was just thinking the same little bird who told him told you. Yes, I think I know the name of the little bird who told him. Well, I suppose it's trouble. Well. Well, go on. You may as well tell me the worst. Come on, Judy. Come on, Judy. Then you come, girl. There you go. Monster. Me? How does it feel that people have to screw up their courage to face you? Me? Yes, you. Who, for instance? Your own children. Jaunty? No. Ah, oh, the fog begins to clear. You've been talking to Henry. Who told you that Tony was up here? Well, you didn't, did you? What is it this time? Oh, if only it was a what rather than a who. Well, it's a girl. No, I'm afraid this time it's rather more serious than that, my dear. Oh, no. You don't mean that he's... Don't be ridiculous, Tony. A woman, not a girl. Not a married woman? Yes, yes, I'm afraid your youngest son has graduated to what I believe they call the hard stuff. goes this morning's sordid little bag of people suing each other. Why don't they just stop being so horrid to each other? Then we could have Saturday mornings off. I'll drink to that. I'll be able to get on with my writing. Unfortunately, it doesn't pay the rent. You and Sarah lost your parents in the war, didn't you? Yes. Well, I lost my mother in the war. I don't understand what you're talking about. Your mother's alive. Oh, Dad's alive. But he's about to go off to Australia, probably forever. Oh, they're alive. So what? I didn't say she was dead. I just said I lost her. Look, I know I seem a bit thick, but I don't understand what you're getting at. Neither do I. It just all seems so bloody unsatisfying. Vicky. Sorry, no. It's just Daddy being here for the last time. And that damn house. And not being able to really talk to him. Oh, uh, sorry for barging in. Shall I go out and come back in again? Oh. I forgot to tell you, I'm working till 12 today. I'm going up to see the birth this afternoon. If you like coming. <laughs> yes, please. How about you? Oh, this is Tim, and he'll be going climbing. Uh, I'm not, actually. Good. I'll pick you and Tim up at 12, then. We'll, um, take a hamper. Strange to your lordship. Is there anything I can get you? Is Bertles around? Oh, he's just slipped out for a minute. I don't know when he'll be back. A whiskey he recommended last time I was over. Not bad at all. I'm damned if I can remember. That's the one. Remember the label. I'll take a couple of bottles. The two, Mrs. Bertles. Two?
There's no need for you to take them, Your Lordship. I'll get Mr. Bertels to bring them round later. Uh, no, I'll take them now. Put them on the bill, will you? The bill? Jolly good. Thanks enormously. Mm -hmm. Set it the other side. Use the boat hook. We'll land on the island for lunch. Super. No good. Look at him. You'd think he'd had anything to do with water after the war. Apparently, my mother came up last week and sailed it and sprang a leak. Really? Well, I met your mother when she came up. You went around. Did you know she was coming? Yes, I just didn't want to see her, that's all. Oh. Sorry, great granddad. I've let them down. This business should have gone on forever. Bankrupt! It's an awful word, isn't it? Actually, it sounds awful. Doesn't it sound awful to you? Bankrupt. Nothing goes on forever. I wish you'd stop blaming yourself. What else? The war. Everybody blames the war. Seven, eight years on, still saying, if it hadn't been for the war, you know. I wasn't up to it, that's all. Wasn't up to it, was I? I'll be sorry to see the last of this old thing. Had some happy times. Yeah, it's a lovely boat. I think Vicky feels as though she's saying goodbye to something as well. She said to me once when I was off to the war, when she was very little, I hate last time, she said. I suppose there's a bit of a masochist in most of us. I called and looked at my old school on the way up here. A whole history of unhappiness. And I couldn't leave England without one last look. And to leave all this. edging nearer, my dear. Who? Your youngest son, the Casanova of the Dales. Hello. Hello. Is, uh, Big Bro around? Oh. Tony. Upstairs. Oh, oh my God. Tim. Morning, Henry. Is he? Frantically. Morning, you. Hello. Has that search from Black Edge Farm come in yet? Um, not unless it's in this morning's post. I haven't had time to look. I've got another brief to type when I finish this one. Any word from Jonty? He's trying to persuade the chairman of quarter sessions to take Turnbull's case after lunch. Why? Turnbull's gone missing. Oh, God. What happens if he doesn't show up? The Board of Trade people want to issue a warrant for his arrest. Good morning, Henry. We saw you arrive. I was just coming round. To brief me, no doubt. Well, where is he? Is he there? He's just saying hello next door. Uh, could you make us some coffee, Madge? Sit down, Henry. Court offices. Morning, Vicky. Is Jack here around? Oh, we've got a crisis on. Yes, I, I want the barrister's room. Jonathan Capstick. What's happening? Lord knows. Our client's gone missing. If he turns up, we're hoping they'll take the case after lunch. Well, the three o'clock train's as late as I can leave it. Look, Jonty's going to try and come and see you if they approve the case being put back. Yes, well, hold on. Yeah. Look, I know it's a bore, but if you can, hang on. I honestly don't think there's much point. Why? 
I'm counting on it. Well, I wouldn't let you know. Hello, Pops. Hive of activity. Morning. Depending on the case. I don't suppose there's a cat in hell's chance term. of you and Tim coming for lunch. I've got another brief to type when I finish this one. Well, I'll do that for you. Yes. Uh, I'll pass the time. Can you make it right? Oh, thank you. Splendid. See you in ten minutes. Oh, I see. Okay. Jonty can't make it till after court. So Herbie didn't believe Tony's side of it at all? Apparently not. Isn't that what he told you? <laughs> what I felt he insinuated. What do you make of it all? Well, I think the woman wanted a co-respondent who wasn't the real co-respondent so that his name wouldn't be besmirched and Tony would be what the Americans call the fall guy. And Herbie is angry with Tony for letting himself be enticed. <laughs> Hardly blame him, can you? Is he there? No, but I am. I do hope that dog is not there. Well, in the family for three generations. Lots of dogs in three generations. We weren't what you did, know, landed gentry. We were a bit like that other saying, mutton dressed as lamb. I wasn't including you. Frankie Henry, I don't think Anthony has the slightest interest in the law. I got that impression. Trouble is, he's always been far too anxious not to hurt his father. And since there's never been anything else he's been remotely interested in. Except the opposite sex. Oh, Henry. The American author, deceased, real name William Sidney Porter, his downfall was drink. Have another. Don't mind if I do. You know Edward's going to persuade Herbie to take him on again. Mistake. I know. But he can't just not do anything. I wish I could offer him something. But things haven't gotten any better since I had to let Tim go. Henry, that's a brilliant idea. You take him on and I'll pay his wages. Oh, Madge. It won't be forever, and it'll keep him occupied and out of Edward's hair. But not a word to either of them. Let's stroll as far as the quarry. <coughs> you know, I haven't been up here for years. Come on, come on, but a cow muck never hurt anybody. You sure you're up to it? Oh, come on, Dad. Just because I spent the last couple of years in London. But you didn't give country life a try before you went off there. I was brought up in the country. Anyway, I did what you wanted of me in other respects, didn't I? No, really. Dad? What did you expect of me? Of you? Not a lot, quite frankly. A bit of common sense would have covered a multitude of sins, a bit of basic, decent behaviour. Oh. Oh, here it comes. You see, see I have served with hard-bitten mattelows who would have dipped their oar in with more bloody finished circumspection than you would give. It's a fine bloody, bloody lookout, isn't yes. it, for our country, when people of your generation that do what the hell they like, but to hell, hell with everybody. everybody. And to hell with bloody you! I'm sorry. I shouldn't have shouted at you, I'm sorry.
What do you imagine I expected of you? You wanted me to join you in the legal profession. And I tried. All right, not very successfully, I know, but... I did try. I really did try. Are all the paintings under the hammer? Yeah, there's the lot. Is the boat really mine? Made it over to you before everything closed down. Knew how fond of it you were. Well, if you need a crew... If you go down this corridor, you'll find a room with books from floor to ceiling. Well, I must tell Henry. Well, not to miss the sale, I mean. They don't have to be in the sale. They were missed out of the inventory for some reason. Tell him to help himself to the lot if he's interested. Good heavens. If there's anything in there that interests you, take it. Well, Lord. Uh, thanks, I mean. <laughs> thanks. You've got a friend for life there. What about you? Me? Oh. I'm just part of the office furniture to Tim. You mustn't worry about me, honestly. I'll be fine with Granny and the Capsticks. And you really won't come to Australia? Tempted, but no. I'm going to have to tell you all the things I was saving for another day, then. What things? Oh, things I've been uncertain about. Or maybe in the end just too embarrassed to go into. The way things are going, I don't suppose your generation will have that problem with the next. Talking about sex, you mean? I never found it a problem inside my own generation. It's between generations that the fog comes down. I hope you're not leading up to the birds and bees. No, of course not. I'm leading up to the subject of your mother and I. And what I've guessed, whether though I may be quite wrong, comes between you. Something that happened when you'd be about... 12 or so. Am I right? I don't want to talk about it. We have to. In fairness to her. And to leave things tidy between you and I. She had an affair when I was a prisoner, didn't she? You know. I've known for years. I knew when we lived here in what you call the happy times. Made happier by the fact that we thought we'd learned to forgive each other. Each other? I transgressed against our marriage before your mother did. Oh. God knows I don't want to leave you with a tarnished image. Shatter the illusions you obviously have about me. Bless you. Oh, Daddy. Seems it was the little trivial sins that came after that we couldn't forgive. Nothing for us to get our teeth into, so to speak. It's the awful pettiness that life can become that makes it hard to live with. Fascinating, isn't it? Yes. Generations of toil right back to the Romans. Jonty got your case put back till after lunch. Has he? He's a good lad. You must be proud of him. I'm proud of both of them. The uh, one over there is always getting himself into difficulties. Can't settle to anything, doesn't seem to know what he wants from life. In a spot of trouble at the moment, as a matter of fact. But there are mitigating circumstances. 
He hasn't let you down, though. Some might think so. Some might think I've let him down. And I'm beginning to think they might be right. You can expect too much of people. Put too much weight on their shoulders. That expected a lot from me. The family name meant a great deal to him. A lot of people around here with good names they don't deserve. You kept yours clean during the war. Must have been a temptation sometimes to break the regulations, take risks, line your own pockets while others were over there giving their lives to put an end to Belson and Buchenwald. I had a brother killed at sea. I used to think of him and I felt temptation. But who cares nowadays? Who cared then? I did. Didn't I? I'm sorry, Mr. Turnbull. I had hoped for something less. No point in appealing. Council advises not. It's what I expected. Feared. I feel a bit better now that it's happened. Now it's behind me. Didn't think it'd be like this, though. I, I got it into my head that they'd allow me back home and pack a bag. Didn't expect to be taken straight off, as it were. I've been eating my cufflinks and my watch. Given to me by the staff when I got married, the cufflinks. And the watch be belonged to my great-grandfather. Oh, I wonder if you'd give them to Mara for keeping. I'd have come anywhere if only to check you weren't up to mischief. Now you take care down those pot rooms. I do. Get scared stiff sometimes. And why do you do it then? Trying to prove something. What? Having a clue. <laughs> Sorry, I've only just made it. Six months. He got six months. Can you believe it? Yeah. What do you think about a partnership? Oh, what about the interview? Well, forget the interview. I'll write. Do you think she will? Oh, I should think so. I told her. What? Well, that I thought you were a pompous oaf when I first met you. <laughs> 